As per usual, Arsenal have already been linked to over 50 players and it's just the beginning of June. The transfer window doesn't close for at least another 80 plus days, so expect another 200 names to be on the list. But before we are bombarded with more transfer targets, let's take a look at how Arsenal could line up in the 2022-2023 season with the main targets, the realistic ones if you like. Some players are due to return from their loan spells and a couple of signings that we made in the January transfer window are about joining with the team so we are looking at more than 30 players in the squad which is obviously too much despite the fact that we are in four competitions and the Premier League will allow up to five subs next season with that said let's get into it there is three formations you could see Ateta using, the familiar 4-3-3 and the 4-2-3-1 with two holding midfielders and finally a back five a 5-2-3 Let's start with the goalkeepers. Believe it or not, as we speak, we actually have five goalkeepers. First up is Leno, who I don't really expect to be here, especially with the World Cup being around the corner. We also have Arthur Okonkwo, who was our third choice last season, and another academy short stopper, Carl Hine. Matt Turner, who is signed from New England Revolution in January, and finally, Aaron Ramsdale. A lot to choose from, but I do expect Okonko to be loaned out and Leno to be sold, which will leave us with three. Ramsdale obviously starts. We already have three center backs in Gabriel, White, and Holding. Austin Trustee, who we signed in the January window, will be joining us very soon as well. And finally, Saliba and Mari, who have been out on loan. That's six centre backs. I will not be surprised if Mari is sold and Trustee is loaned out. So I think he will go with Gabriel and White and have Saliba on the bench, which will not please many people. We will include him in a different formation later on, so stick around for that. Time to talk left backs. Here is where I'll include the first realistic signing. Aaron Hickey. Tini's injuries have unfortunately left us in desperate situations over the last two seasons now. We got a backup last season though, but to be fair, he's still very raw. Will he even stay? Will he be loaned out? That's one to keep an eye on. No, no Tavares. Hickey doesn't start for now, but of course he can also play as a right back. One problem though, in terms of quantity, that is a position we could literally play a different player for all 38 Premier League matches. Niles and Bellerin have returned from their trophy winning loan spells to join Tommy Yasu and Cedric. I would be very surprised though if Bellerin stayed. I actually expect two of them to leave. He could be joined by Cedric or he could be joined by Niles, maybe even both of them. So that's the back five done, including the goalkeeper. No changes from last season. The only addition will be the backup options. Speaking of Maitland Niles, he might not be in the right back argument. He could be in the midfield one though, and that's where we go next. In the holding role, I will not take too much time. Party goes into that position. Let's hope he's still fit by the time we finish this video. <laughs> On the right side of Pate, another easy one, Martin Odegaard. One of the easiest picks, in fact. We know the qualities he has, especially if he improves the players around him. That's where I'm going to include the second signing, Yuri Tillemans. Greater defending, making tackles, covering the ground and helping out in the final third. Sounds perfect, right? But what about Granit Xhaka, the guy that every manager likes? What happens to him? Just like Saliba, we will talk about him a bit later. It was easy to pick party because we know the roles of Sambi and Mohamed El Neni. We'll talk about them later as well. Time for the attackers. Another easy one is Bukayo Saka on the right. If you put together the last three seasons, he has been our best player by far. At left wing, we could include new signings, but remember we are trying to keep it reasonable. So Gabriel Martinelli stays there. At center forward though, I have included another signing, another Gabriel, another Brazilian Jesus. No, no, not that kind of Jesus, like Gabriel Jesus. That's who I'm talking about here. Will we sign him? Will he be the answer? We'll have to wait and see. The fourth signing is Marquinhos, another Brazilian. Surprise, surprise. But I haven't included him for now because it's not guaranteed that he is going to break through to the first team right away. If you'd like to learn more on him, though, I did a video about him, so I'll link it up in the YouTube card right now. So this is what we have so far. Ramsdale in goal, Ben White and Gabriel as the centre-backs, Tommy as a right-back, Tini at left-back, Pate as the holding midfielder, Odegaard and Tillemans either side of him, Saka on the right, Martinelli on the left and Jesus up front. On the bench, 
it's going to be interesting we've still not talked about nearly 20 players to be honest so who makes the bench and who doesn't as i pointed out at the beginning of the video next season we allowed five subs in the premier league so who will make it first up let's put a backup goalkeeper you have to have a backup goalkeeper so matana becomes the second choice goalkeeper he is very experienced by the way he's nearly 28 so i think that's fair enough Next up, let's include the players who are probably definitely going to make it. Aaron Hickey as the second sub, William Saliba as the third, Xhaka as the fourth sub, Smithrow as the fifth sub. Those players are definitely going to make the bench if they're in and around the team. And the next two are Edin Ketia and El Nene. Obviously, we're expecting Ketia to sign a new contract. El Nene just signed his recently, so I don't think they would if they weren't guaranteed at least a place on the bench. And there's only two spots remaining, and we haven't talked about Nicolas Pepe, Lokonga, Pablo Mari, Holding, Tavares, there's a lot of players. Maitland Niles has still not made it the team yet. Cedric, a lot of players have still not made it. So who will make it and who will miss out? For now, I will include Nicolas Pepe and Lokonga, but I'm definitely fearful about Pepe's role in the team. I don't even think he'll be here next season. We have to wait and see. As you can tell, we'll have way too many players if everyone is fit. And we've still not even talked about the other potential signings. I don't think we'll make only three or four signings. It could be six or seven, which will make it even more difficult. So I'm expecting at least five to six of these players to end up leaving. It could be Pepe, it could be Lokonga on loan, it could be Tavares on loan. We have to wait and see see. The only way we can include Saliba without messing around with the back line is to play a back five and have it look like this. Ramsdale, Saliba, White and Gabriel as the centre backs, Tommy Asu, Tieni as the wing backs, Pate and Tillemans in midfield with Saka, Jesus and Odegaard. Now, that's not Odegaard's favourite position, but we have seen Ozil playing as a right winger under Emery in the first few games. We have seen Santi Cazola playing from the left side as well during his time at Arsenal. So could Odegaard be offered the same role? We have to wait and see. But that's the only way we could fit Saliba, White and Gabriel. The other one is really to drop Tomiyasu and to play White as a right back, which I don't think will happen. The only way to fit Granit Jack in this team depends on the fixtures. We could then play with Pate and then Jack and Tillemans either side of him but then that will mean no spot for Gabriel Martinelli or Smith because up front will have Jesus, Saka and Odegaard. So that was the first potential lineup video. Let's hope we do make more signings than this. Obviously Tillemans, Gabriel Jesus and Aaron Hickey would improve our squad but we definitely like to see more. Clearly we wouldn't have had any role for Lacazette and it could be followed by many players. But speaking of Lacazette, I did a video the other day talking about how Lacazette did at Arsenal compared to Leon. So if you want to check that video out, click on screen right now. Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.